<laughs> Quietude. Quietude, Bailey. Quietude. Uh, I'm sure many people wish that I would extol the virtue of quietude. Stop bugging <laughs> all the martinis. All the listening. martinis. Speaking of people who are listening, we're very apologetic that there was apparently a sound issue on our last episode. Yeah. Quite mm. extensive. And no idea what it was. I would have liked to have just edited it all out, but uh, unfortunately that was the good stuff and it was either put it in sounding real bad or cut it out entirely. So forgive us. Hopefully you feel like we made the right decision. For those two minutes of nonsense. Mm. Skippity, skip it. Hi, I'm Michael Earp. And I'm Bailey Turner. Welcome to Michael's Walk, the podcast. Michael's Walk is a road trip, a search for something. Spoilers, it's myself, and it was inside all along. If only it were that simple. Driven by Tori Amos' album, Scarlet's Walk, I'm recreating the journey Scarlet took in its 20th anniversary year. I'll also be there. With the loving and patient, always patient, support of Bailey and Teague Lee, three trans queers set out across America. That's 33 states in 55 days. To connect with the songs, the land that inspired them, and the fans inspired by the songs. We'll talk music, travel, healing, and hope as we ask the questions, how do I heal from 15 years of coercive control and manipulation? And what role does the music we listen to play in our own relationship narratives? We've self-produced this podcast and trip. You can support us via GoFundMe. For the full story, head to michaelerb.net. So, what have you got to say about Bugger Martini, Bailey? Um, Well, we've we've talked about this one a couple of times. I think I remember having some conversations on the road about it, trying to figure out what the dickens it meant. Yeah. I think that warrants... Because clearly it meant something to her to include on the hidden treasures yeah particularly with the other songs like there was only six tracks originally Mm. on hidden treasures and for this to be one of them when the others are so weighty Mm. uh surely this wasn't purely light relief Mm. it is quite light from an auditory perspective Mm. Uh, she doesn't take along with it lounge music (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> well, I, I suppose what I thought it meant, and having read Resistance, um, which is, if you're not a Tory person, listen to our podcast, If in which case, bless you. Um, <laughs> but um, you're know, reading Resistance, which is the book she released um, back in 2020. I really connected this with her talking about singing in Washington, D.C. and kind of observing some of the conversations that were happening Political and, wheeling and dealing. Yeah, all that stuff. And it kind of seemed to have an, a version of that. And honestly, I didn't even put together that like bug as in like a listening device. Yeah. Bug a martini until you yeah. brought it up. And I went, oh, so it's like, you know, putting a, what was it? What were you doing? Were you like bugs in olives or something? It was like yeah, a thing yeah. that people you used could, to do. Uh, yeah. You, you can disguise an olive, uh, like disguise a microphone as an olive. Yeah. It sounds like something out of Get Smart. <laughs> uh, For anyone under the age of... <laughs> Get Smart was a show. In the, yeah. yeah, there are a few allusions there to subterfuge and spying. Mm. And obviously the Send Me to Moscow, you know, harks back to Cold War yeah. spies. And, yeah. and like dead know. letter boxes and all that. Yeah. But then there's also this weird sort of sexual... <laughs> Kind of lime spanking going on well, in there. Well, yeah, but... I haven't my lime spanked in a long time. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> you were lying. No, I, I think I had my lime spanked a bit earlier. But, like, the your version coercion and my version elixir of quietude, that has me wonder whether or not uh, there's anything to do with, um, like, spiking of drinks going on here mm. too. And whether getting someone drunk in order to elicit information from mm-hmm. them uh, is your version and then my version is where you subdue someone mm-hmm. with some kind of alcohol or spiked beverage. Sure, that's interesting. I think as I read it, like, 
you're like you're using you've bought me this drink in order to get something out of me whereas i just the elixir of quietude like it's just my chance to have a quiet drink yeah like, i suppose you know, i prefer like that a, reading i mean that's not but yeah like but I, and like on that i suppose in terms of the song means to me like for the poetry collection that i'm writing um it was really hard to place what poem because obviously i'm writing a poem per track on Scarlet's Walk, sort of, you know, using the Scarlet's Walk song as a reference point to then pair up with the memories that we had on the trip and then, and then write from there. And it was really hard to find something to put with this, but ended up putting a poem that I'm kind of, the working title of it is American Ghosts. And it's just about twats and <laughs> dickheads that we came across, you know, particularly I came across on the road and thinking about that exact thing of, you know, the way that, men can sometimes behave when they're sort of in the sexual marketplace and sort of feeling very feeling very exposed and fe- feeling kind of pumped for information a lot lol you know like oh what you know where are you staying and you know, all these kind of questions to try and find out things about me to then determine whether I was a viable fit. option yeah yeah kind of thing and then but also like well you know what they say oh god proximity is sexy <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like the grinder like byline or something? Yeah. yeah, but also you proved that wrong numerous times. Yes, I have in the states, yeah. in particularly. Most of the yeah, the people who followed through all came from at least one and a half hours away <laughs> to have a date or a shag. But yeah, just sort of feeling like I'm giving up all this information and then and then kind of getting no result or you know worse yet you know there was an experience I had in uh, San Diego and we'd seen the San Diego show had an incredible time. And I'd managed to sort of tie down this bloke who was going to come and meet me afterward and pick me up and take me to his place and whatever, to whatever the adults do. And so... Spanking lime. Spank this, yeah, spank my lime. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but obviously, you know, everyone's left the venue. Like, everyone's left to go to, like, I think I went to a gay bar or something. Mm. And I'm standing on this sort of San Diego corner... It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm like wearing like, I just, I was wearing this really short skirt. I think I felt really kind of exposed. And this guy just kept not responding and sort of fobbing me off and being like, oh yeah, I'll be there in a sec. And, and then just kind of, kind of disappearing on me. And it's like, you know, I've been waiting around for thing like an hour and like, like I was waiting around yeah. for like an hour or something. And by that time it was like, well, the cab to the, where the people were having the party, cause it was late, just wasn't going to be viable. And I just kind of wound up going home. And this guy ended up messaging me at like three in the morning to be like, I'm sorry, I decided to do my washing. I was like, why wouldn't you just, just say you're not interested or just say you're not available. Like don't yeah. string or people Or just say, along like I've this. decided to do my washing. Like, at the time. At the time, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, but that was, you know, this sort of, this coercion, this kind of like, you yeah, know, I yeah. just kind of almost, it, I almost felt like multiple times that it was like, I just want to know that I can get you and I just want to know that I can, you know, keep you on a string for as long as I want with no intention of following through just so I can feel good about myself and wasting my time and and kind of, you're really hurting my heart and I just, um... It's like they block you out for their use and then decide not to use you, therefore uh, not allowing you to find some a, a replacement yeah, or 100%. make other plans yeah. or whatever. Uh, it's like, I mean, the thing that I can sort of imagine is just these dudes, you know, who just put like eight girls on a string and just kind of decide as they go, which one's the most convenient, you know? And so, and like, I mean, I like I have done versions of that, like where I'm like, you know, there are two guys who are interested and I'm trying to determine which one is, more suited to me, but I'm certainly not going to like string someone along until 11 o'clock at night, determining whether yeah. I can actually, you know, it's like, well, I'll keep you on hold just in case this guy doesn't follow through. Yeah. No, I, at some point I will decide, no, I'm sorry. Like, actually I'm going to, you know, and like, and sure I've been guilty of some bad behavior, but this was just out of control and it happened a lot um, while we were away. And to both of us, you know, it was just sort of situations where like, this is just mm. bad manners, if nothing else. Yeah. I mean, look, The one thing I would like to impress on the (laughs) men's of America is uh, it's okay to use an up-to-date photo. (laughs) Like, most of the time, it wouldn't have made a difference once I arrived, but the fact that I walk in and you are clearly 15 years older than your photo 
is just not okay. No, it's bad. It's real bad. Damn. I like think what I found interesting, I was talking to someone recently about this. He had like, you know, like you've seen those like grinder screenshots that are like, hi, 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 hi. I just like over a matter of like months almost. Anyway, he had one that just said, hi, 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 hi. I can see you at the airport. <laughs> so the <laughs> last one. Oh my goodness. So, and you know, obviously it's freaked, freaky. Well, in, in Provincetown, someone sent me hi, 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 four times in a row, like instantly. Mm. Oh, that's right. And I replied to each one. You know how you swipe right to reply to that mm. message? I replied to each individual one and said, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and they blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, yeah, how odd. How very odd. Oh, you don't, yeah, you can give it out, but you can't take it. Oh, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm now, I derailed now I'm, your airport story. No, no, I've, I, you derailed it, but I'm also just now thinking about, um, <laughs> um, you know, someone who was going to, you know, spank mine and Teague's lime just like a Tori Amos fan would. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy. Oh, my God. I need to do a dramatic reading of that. You do. You do. I don't think we you know, probably won't get away. We'll probably get like, in trouble on Spotify if we tell the full length of that story. Anyway. But yeah, this friend sort of had this situation happen and was trying to find out why it happened. And I went, it, it gives me the sense of what I know that people sometimes do where they just reply, they just message someone, hey, and then they don't hear back, so they delete it. And then they yeah. see them again. And it's like, they're just sending hey to whoever. They're not thinking about who yeah. they've sent it to because he clearly hasn't remembered that you've already messaged this person. Yeah. And like, Because you know, I don't delete chats. Neither um, do I. If, if I've I want decided I know one to, if I no longer want to, converse with someone for, you know, an upsetting reason or whatever, I will block them. Mm. But I don't delete a chat because I need to be able to refer back to what we've said before. 100%. What has blown my mind once with this kind of situation is a guy who said, hey, and sent a photo selfie. And I had a brief conversation with him before we got distracted. Mm. And then uh, months later, he sent... The same hello greeting with a completely different oh, photo. Oh, no. And I'm like, well, it's right here in my chat. So yeah. clearly you're using fake photos. Yeah. Anyway, I feel like Bugger Martini has dissolved into talking about Grinder. So? Yeah, I know. I mean, it was such a huge feature of the trip, which is really tragic to say. But Grinder behavior was, there was a big kind of cornerstone of how that impacted us and how sort of the sort of subliminal motive of us being there. We wanted of... to have a wet, hot American summer. We did. And we got distracted so hard by ghosts. Yeah. And these, you know, just these bugs. Yes. These people bugging us with their problems. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's also because we don't know. There's <laughs> only so much you can really say about a song in which Tori has apparently, you know, said not much of anything about it. Um, yeah, I, she really hasn't said much. She's remained very vague. Although I will say there's a line, line up the dots, music to buy to, music to die to. That line up the dots makes me think of a poem I wrote in my early 20s where it ends with this image of I just want to know who's counting the dots because, mm. you know, there's lots of questioning going on in the mm. poem, but then that that idea that, you know, our lives are just a series of dots that can be read in various ways. Yeah, sure. And, like, what kind of larger entity is counting yeah, everyone's right. dots. But, yeah, that's, that's where my mind goes when I read that line, but I know that's a very specific reference no, that literally no one else will make. But that's the beauty of touring. And words. <laughs> <laughs> So we are determined to get this episode under half an hour. Yes. So with the final 15 minutes that we have, let's talk about where you're at with the Michael's Walk book. I have made I have, so much progress. This I, is the best news. I have astounded myself with just how... <laughs> I'm so great. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you, no I, it is incredibly impressive just, the amount of work you've got in. But also... I mean, I have ADHD. Mm. Sticking with a task is not my forte. <laughs> and particularly when it gets to the hard pointy end mm -hmm. of things. And so 
basically where I'm at is I had my first draft at the beginning of this year. I wanted to try and trim uh, at least 50,000 words from it because it was 150,000 and it needs to be under 100. But anyway, starting where I can. You realize what you've just done, right? What? You've done the thing that people do to Tori, like, drop the, like, <laughs> drop the other album, drop the stuff that doesn't make it to the final, <laughs> drop the b sides. Yeah. Like, drop the 100,000 words, Michael. <laughs> well, there's certainly a lot of information. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. I'm, I'm finding with my edit that I'm not actually cutting a lot of content. Mm. I'm cutting how I'm saying it. Mm. Uh, like, I really am taking my very long-winded way of being poetic and repeating myself and showing things from different angles and trying to hone it into a much more streamlined and more focused poetic approach where rather than using lots of different approaches to describe one sort of thing, I just like, I'll make three sentences one yeah, and crystallize use the it. best yeah. of, of each of them kind of thing. Yeah, great. And so where that's landed me is I have now finished my read through edit of my second draft. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm currently at about 112,000 words. So I'm still more than I wanted to, but I'm that's nearly 40,000 gone. I've had some friends in my writers group Gisela and Anna are reading through it from beginning to end to give me a whole picture what they think can be trimmed or edited, what's making sense, what's flowing, what's not. So all I've got left for this draft is to make some of the larger changes that they've pointed out that need to happen. And then I also need to fix up throughout the, throughout the narrative of the trip, I've put in flashback sections of memories from uh, before. And those I've, just in the last few days, I pulled those out separately and read them through on their own mm -hmm. um, to work out whether they flow if you view them as their own thing yeah. and what key memories might be missing. Mm -hmm. Or I found that an entire memory I'd included twice but written slightly differently right. both times. So that's an easy 1500 words that I can <laughs> delete. Uh, uh, yeah, that kind of thing. So, but. I, once this second draft is done, it's uh, at a point where I'll be able to show it to publishers and or agents should I be able to find out the right people to send it to. Mm -hmm. And Excellent. when I send it, I'll have to be like, I know this needs to be shorter than it is, but I've got it to a point where I need that intense editorial mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. so we can have a shared vision of where it needs to get trimmed and what needs to be honed. Yeah, for sure. Where it's make, headed. Yeah. Very cool. But I'm genuinely feeling closer than I ever have. Yeah. And that apparently is a fuel of motivation because I do get up every morning, uh, well, week mornings at least, uh, and do an hour and a bit's work. And even this afternoon before you came over, I was like, I've got an hour till Bailey arrives. I'm going to keep going. Yeah, and great. so I practically never work in the afternoon because I'm usually too brain fried. But here we I go. was here for it today. So That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so, so excited. So excited. <sighs> Can't wait to read it. Yes. Can't wait to bit where I get to read it. It's going well, to be awesome. When I finish the second draft, it's probably a good point for you to read it. Yes. Yeah. And be like... But Michael, that's not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> please don't please don't make me look bad in this chapter. Did you have to put in every single time I ordered chicken wings? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, you did. I'm, no, I'm I'm willing to get on board with that. <laughs> that's going to be great. So 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 proud of you, and it's just such a huge undertaking. And to get to the point where it starts to bear the fruit that you know we invested in now over two years ago, like you know, that's just such a huge. Mm mountain to climb and then sort of look ahead to feel like you've actually got something you've got something in your hot little hands to actually start you know getting out there and finding the market for it and kind of hopefully getting toward doing the fun stuff yeah it's going to be really cool so cool yeah nice ah 
And you talked a little bit about your poem related to Bugger Martini, but how are you going with the collection in general? We're getting there. We're getting there slowly. Um, I think once I sort of let go of the sort of, I want to get it done by October 28th kind of energy, I just went, all right, let's just sit with this properly. I'm still hoping to sort of move forward with it as soon as possible, but there's also the, the difference. With my first collection, I had 33 three poems in it or 34 and they were big poems and this is something that you pointed out to me that I hadn't really considered but this collection is obviously a lot shorter because there's fewer poems and the poems are a lot more refined in in terms of style than the epic approach I took on the last one so that means that the book pages are going to be like piss nothing Mm -hmm. so I was like well I actually do have to do more work in fleshing this out to make it worth putting on a shelf kind of thing. And I had initially had the thought, you know, which is an idea that you had sort of put in, put into the mix, which was of doing sort of some short prose essays about certain things or, you know, sort of big picture themes. And so I'm still thinking about doing that um, and sort of interlacing that through the work, you know, sort of doing a piece about my relationship with Tori, doing a piece about how the trip came to be, doing, you know, sort of some key memories that just don't seem to suit poem form or just sort of talking about, you know, America at large, which is something that I also thought about putting, you know, reflecting on. I know we've talked about it before about currently trying to write about what does it mean to be writing about America at this time, you know, when it's just the imperialism and its impact on genocide around the world is just something we're becoming I think it's something we've always been aware of, but becoming really critically aware of mm. and sort of releasing sort of work about the, you know, about America just is a really interesting thing that I'm sort of trying to write about in prose form at the moment, little by little. So, yeah, but like sort of working on the poems very slowly, finished a couple, sort of got them to sort of first draft stage. And that's kind of where I'm just trying to get to. I'm just trying to get to a first draft of the poetry, because once that's done, then the prose stuff becomes a bit easy because I know what I need to write in reflection of. Yeah. Um, but it's been so tricky because there's so much sort of, when we were traveling, I wrote so much scrap. So there's like just pages of just kind of little bits. Mm. And you know, like, as you would know, like I was, when we were driving and um, I'd often say to Michael, oh, can you record for a sec? And Michael would put the signal on and like, yeah, the app on and like ran record. And I would like speak into the dictaphone or, or speak onto the microphone and just kind of just spill something or whatever kind of had sat with me at the time and reading some of that stuff back I'm like, what the f- was this for like what's this what is this related to and where does it fit and does it fit at all and was it just a fever dream yes a bit of of that also like what's is there any virtue in it now yeah because kind of trying to scoot back two years to a memory is very difficult and you go well is does it do i need to read practical magic the novel in order to write a poem um and i suppose part of me is is hesitant because I do want to bring out the collection quite quickly. I'm sort of like, oh, I don't really want to read that book, you know, that I wanted to read. But part of me is kind of sitting in the reality of maybe I kind of have to and actually put that kind of work in because you know that, that was so true in the moment. You could audio book it. I could audio book it. That is a really good point. I love a good audio book. I'm trying to get used to audio book sort of podcast, having people talking in my ear. I find them very different. Here we are recording a podcast. Yes. And I... <laughs> I do struggle to listen to podcasts because I find when people are having a conversation in my ear, unless I'm acutely interested, Mm. I very quickly will tune it out. Mm. Whereas because an audiobook is a narrative, uh, I find I'm less likely to just zone it out. Mm. Interesting. Let us know your thoughts, audience. Mm. (laughs) Uh, And you can include in your thoughts just how spectacular the production on this <laughs> podcast indeed support michael on patreon yeah, um, it clearly is no i'm left patreon now oh right i combined my newsletter and my patreon all into Substack, so you can get oh, my sure. free newsletter or pay me for the extra stuff all in one place that's I handy it was very handy Hoo-ha. and so yeah come join me on Substack. very cool I think the other last thing that I'm sort of thinking about is if I am going to take longer to develop it, do I want to revisit the possibility of trying to see if I can get a publisher on board? But I'm also a bit kind of concerned about the America factor in that question. And 
if it's a small collection, whether that's going to be of interest to a publisher. Don't know, don't know, don't know. Yeah. But I've managed to kind of meet a few more published poets in the last little while going to a really cool event in Collingwood called Bloodletting. And there are a few published poets who are there. And, and, and I've seen one or two poetry competitions that I think you could enter. Yes, which and if you to do get any recognition from that, it leads to the publishing with a traditional publisher. Yes, much easier, easier when you're when you're award winning. So yeah, I've got. I know you just sent me a link. I've got to check out and see if I can get in here on time. I'm also trying to see if I can get into the One Eight Play Festival at um, Butterfly Club. But like anyway, I'm rambling now. I'm um, entirely irrelevant. <laughs> we have to do lists. We do. We've got a lot going on. So we need to stop bagging these martinis. We've got to stop hearing our echoes. <laughs> Just get Echo can't hear you. Echo can't hear you. Um, Send me. To what are we doing? Now. What are we doing next? What's our next one? Because we're meeting again in two weeks. Yeah. At which point? Are we going to name one now? Or yeah, are we going to? Oh, we're going to name it. Yeah, that's not usually my favorite thing to do. Uh, well. Let's list the ones we have left because I need to. We're getting to toward the end of it now. Uh, Indian Summer, Operation Peter Pan, and Apollo's Frog. Uh, I feel like Rose deserves Apollo's Frog to be the ultimate final episode. I'm so on your page. We love Rose. Shout out to Rose Grace. So shall we take on? Should we take on another little one because it's it's two weeks away? Let's yeah, do a little. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, not the Operation Peter Pan is little, but yeah. when I think about Indian Summer and Apollo's Rock, they're just such epic. They they're so epic musically. Whereas sonically, so different. Um, Operation Peter Pan and Indian Summer. Uh, so, I, does that mean we're going Operation Peter Pan? I think so. Next? I think it does. Uh, and what what are we hoping to have done by then? Uh, I want to have finished. I don't think that's too much of an ask. Where not, I'm not at the rate you're going at. And so I would like to have finished this drama. I mean, that said, one of the things that I have to do is like add more dialogue to the entire first half of the book. So um, that might be a larger task than I'm giving myself credit for. But it's, it's a goal. We'll, uh, yeah. I want to aim for it because I just want to keep moving. How about you? What do you want to have done by uh... I would really love if there were a few more pieces in the can. I think I would like to have a good map of the actual book itself and just kind of have a real sense of how I'm going to feel. I'm hoping to keep it to the 88 pages I had for Ulysses, so how am I going to fill those? Um, I'm going to make a good plan and we'll hash it out. Let's have a creative time. Let's do it. Excellent. So we were so focused in getting that episode done under half an hour that we forgot to do our song swap. So here we are jamming it in at the end in true classic us style, jamming things in. Uh, I am going to recommend uh, Dining Alone by Carla Blay because I think it has a similar loungy, jazzy feel and um, you know, the idea of dining alone can play into that uh, elixir of quietude that Bailey was talking about. And then changing tone slightly, Drink You Gone by Ingrid Michaelson, because I really feel like that's tying into more of the themes across the album as a whole. Love both of those. The challenge that I had trying to pick song swaps for these is that you really want to have the song really deciphered and understood, which I don't. But for me, it was about connecting to the soundscape and the ambient nature of Bugger Martini. And so the two I picked were Tom's Diner by Suzanne Vega, which I just love the specificity of the location, kind of similar to Bugger Martini and um, sort of just this story about the people that are there and the presence. And there's sort of this kind of similar sinisterish kind of unnerving vibe about it that I love and the other one I'm picking is Hey Eugene by Pink Martini it's not about the Martini connection it's once again about this the story and the people and the places and how much you can feel very connected to the specificity of where you are but also you can still have a really deep connection to what's going on in your own emotional understanding of what's happening so um yeah those were mine 
Phoenix like. The Michael's Walk podcast acknowledges that the journey they are undertaking takes place on the sacred and unceded nations of many proud Indigenous peoples. From the lands of the Wurundjeri and the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation, we are fortunate to call home to each and every Native American tribe's land we'll set foot on as we travel. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and humbly acknowledge their sovereignty.